Good morning. Welcome to worship for the Brandon Mill Church today on this icy Sunday morning. As we, as a staff, uh, had conversation yesterday, two of our staff were without power, and we knew the predictions for the evening and morning were not good. So it is uh, my privilege to lead us in a moment of worship today. And it is a very frigid morning, but we are happy that you are joining with us for this time of worship. It is Valentine's Day, so I say happy Valentine's, but it is also a very significant Sunday in the church calendar year. You may not realize it, but it is Transfiguration Sunday. And so let us begin our worship this morning with these words from our call to worship. Listen, God is calling us to worship. Come without fear into God's presence. We will listen for God's voice and be attentive to God's revelation. Climb to the mountain where God reigns. Break through all that clouds our vision. We will not turn from the dawn of a new day, but will greet the morning star arising within. So let us worship God for a few moments this morning. Our scripture reading comes from the ninth chapter of Luke's gospel, Luke's version of the transfiguration. It begins at verse 28. So let us listen for God's word to us. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. His clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men standing with him, Moses and Elijah. They were talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood beside him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not even knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son. The chosen listen to him when the voice had spoken Jesus was found alone and they kept silent and in those days told no one any of these things they had seen and so this is the word of the Lord and we say thanks be to God so today Transfiguration Sunday one of the most extraordinary events found in all of Scripture. It's in Luke's Gospel, and Matthew tells this story, Mark tells this story. Someone told me last week that they have never truly understood what this transfiguration story was about. So I hope we can talk about it and understand it a little better this morning. And there are six critical elements in this extraordinary moment. First, Jesus goes up the mountain with three disciples. Second, Jesus is changed. He is transformed. Third, Moses and Elijah appear. Fourth, Peter makes a response. Fifth, there's a voice from the cloud. And sixth, the disciples respond. New Testament scholar Joel Green in his commentary on Luke says, 
In the transfiguration, we, like the disciples, witness such an incredible moment in Jesus' life. The transfiguration is like a composite of the entire gospel tradition. You see, transfiguration brings to a close the season of epiphany when we've talked about God's revelation of Jesus as the light in our world. Even then, on January 10th, the second Sunday of Epiphany, and we remembered Jesus' baptism when that voice said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And now, in this moment, Jesus is predicting his death and will soon, later in this chapter, set his face toward Jerusalem. And so we join in this journey beginning this Wednesday evening, Ash Wednesday, as you come to the church and pick up Lent bags to help you navigate through this journey of Lent as we walk with Christ to the cross. Again, one of the most extraordinary events found in all of Scripture, we've heard it today. St. Ignatius was a theologian in the mid-16th century. He created and named spiritual exercises. And one that I thought of this week as I was reflecting upon this passage was what he called an exercise of contemplation. Ignatius would suggest that as we listen to the story of the Transfiguration, we place ourselves right into the story. So, instead of Peter, James, and John, it is now Peter, James, John, and Jim. Imagine being present in this extraordinary event found in all of Scripture. And as I was thinking about Ignatius and his uh, exercise, it really helped me think of Two elements in this story that help me be present. And maybe it will for you as well. <clears throat> First, Luke's gospel gives a descriptor of these three disciples with him going up to the mountain to pray. And Luke tells us they were weighed down with sleep. Weighed down with with sleep. I want to take that phrase and, and break it up into two parts. First, they were going up to a mountain and they were weighed down. I don't know about you, but if I was climbing a mountain, I might be weighed down when I got to the top as well. J. Kirk Richards created a beautiful painting called The Burden. It shows someone going up a mountain carrying a heavy load on their back, not probably realizing that angels were above helping him carry the load. I want to tell you that, especially during this pandemic, I too have felt like I've had this weight, this burden on my back, a burden for the Brandon Mill Church, a burden for those who have been ill that I cannot see personally because of COVID-19. A burden for working with our staff and our council members to do everything we can to stay connected to you as this body of Christ. And then there's the burden of when can we find it safe enough to be personally back in this sanctuary for worship. Those are heavy burdens. And as I place myself in this transfiguration story, as I discover this painting, I'm reminded that all of us are weighed down with burdens, and yet I'm reminded we're not carrying them alone, that the presence of Jesus, the light of the world, 
his caring goes with us. So the disciples were weighed down. But they were also, Luke says, weighed down with sleep. That element was a little difficult for me. I cannot tell you that during the pandemic, I too have been weighed down with sleep. A couple of months ago, our son told me about a new app that he had discovered that he said helps him go to sleep on nights when he's having a difficult time sleeping. He said, Dad, you should try it. It's an app that tells a story, and the story will make you fall asleep. So I'll never forget downloading the app, choosing that night to listen to a particular story that he told me I would probably appreciate. So I remember crawling into bed and hearing this very calm voice begin to tell me this story. If you know me very well, you know that I love stories. And my problem became that rather than listening to this voice telling me a story that put me to sleep, I was listening. I wanted to know the full story. And I stayed awake. So I can only imagine what it was like to be there with those three disciples and being weighed down with sleep. But then Luke says they were awakened. And then when they were awakened, they saw these pillars of their faith standing right there with Jesus. And it causes me to wonder, what is it that awakens us in these challenging times? So the second item in this transfiguration moment is the significance of the cloud. In verse 34, we read that a cloud came and overshadowed them. They were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came this voice that said, This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. When the disciples entered this cloud, Luke says they were terrified. So if I'm right there with them, I too would be terrified. And then I think about in our daily lives, we too can become so fearful of the clouds that surround us. The clouds of COVID-19, of tragic accidents, of job layoffs, of terminal diagnoses, of challenging times for education, struggles with mental health fractured or strained marriages, problems with children. And in those moments of being in the clouds, it becomes difficult to see the glory of God that we're reminded of in this transfiguration. When the disciples entered that cloud, when they were terrified, God spoke. This is my son. The chosen, listen to him. It was in the cloud where God chose to remind them of Jesus' identity. And so for us, it's in the clouds of life where God will continue to remind us of our identity. The very children of God. And when that happens, we are truly transformed. We are transfigured by God's presence. The end of this story is an amazing moment too because as Peter had said, he wants to stay there and build uh, three wonderful pillars to uh, remember this moment forever. But Jesus tells him it's time to go back down the mountain. There's work to be done. So if I'm there with them, I'm reminded that there is so much to be done by this body of Christ, even in, especially in a pandemic. 
I love the story of Robert Louis Stevenson. As a boy, when he was looking out his window one evening, these were the days before electric lights. And so he was looking and saw the town lamplighter coming along, lighting one lamp and then another and then another. Stevenson was so impressed by the light. And he wrote about the lamplighter who went along punching holes in the darkness. Punching holes in the darkness. Jesus the Christ came into this world as the light of the world, punching holes in the darkness that surround us. And now we are the hands, we are the feet, we are the mouth, we are the body of Christ called to continue punching holes in the darkness. We're trying to do that here at the Brandon Mill Church. But the cloud can sometimes be overwhelming. James Finnegan writes that the more aware we become of the range of human need that surrounds us, the more overwhelmed we can become to the point that we end up doing nothing. He says, the secret of the compassionate life is to focus our care on a few things that we can do something about. Like the Sunday Park Food Pantry. Punching holes in the darkness. So there are needs all around us and will we stay awake? Or will we become weighed down with sleep so that we miss the opportunities that God's love offers through us to the least of these. I want to close with a story that occurred in Lawrence, Kansas. About two blocks away from the church that I served there, there was a wonderful Mexican restaurant. And often as a staff, it was a place to take somebody to lunch or even as our family we would go there to eat. Many of the staff in the restaurant were unable to speak much English. One in particular was a source of joy to me. His name was Julio. Julio <clears throat> had a smile as big as Dallas. Our communication was very limited. But I loved when he waited on. It was about six months before we moved from Lawrence. I was there one day and Julio was not working. I said, where's Julio? And they told me that his wife had just had their first child. She was in the hospital. This was pre-COVID. So I went that evening to the hospital to see them, and Julio was thrilled that I came. And then as a body of Christ, we in Lawrence were able to come together and help Julio and his wife and his new child with so many things that they couldn't have afforded otherwise. About one week before we were moving, I decided I needed to go tell Julio that we were leaving. That would be an extremely difficult moment for me. So I typed a letter to him in English, but then I also had Microsoft Word translate the words into Spanish. I'll never forget going to the restaurant in the middle of the afternoon and Julio was there. We sat down, I showed him the letter that said, that we as a family would be moving from Lawrence to North Carolina. As he read the letter, I could see in his face a tear. He looked up at me and asked, why? And I tried my best to explain God's call to Julio. But what I will never forget is walking away from that moment, walking to my car, 
so grateful that I had not become so weighed down or so sleepy to human need in a very ordinary moment that I almost miss. So I say, may God keep us awake to punch holes in darkness, in ordinary moments all around us, in new conversations. You see, Luke tells us that this is the whole scope of the gospel tradition right here in the Transfiguration. And the most amazing part of this story for me is that we, all of us, through our baptism and our oneness with Christ, are made full partners in the work of bringing God's kingdom into this world. Amazing. So I say thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray together this morning. Almighty God, giver of life, your light shines in our lives and your glory is revealed through your son, Jesus the Christ. Reveal his glory to us, just as you did to Peter, James, and John. That we would be filled with his power and our mouths would proclaim his presence forevermore. Oh God, the darkness of winter has been our companion. Bring your light to us that we might see your glory that we might work for you poking holes in the darkness around us, whether the darkness of loneliness, the darkness of hunger, the darkness of COVID-19. Oh God, use the Brander Mill Church as a place that offers hope and peace to our world that desperately needs your hope and your peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus. The one who taught us to pray, as we pray now, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning here at the Brandon Mill Church. And I want to charge you now as you go carefully through this day, to know that you too are part of the transfiguration. You too are called to punch holes in the darkness around us. And know that as you do that, you do not go alone. Wherever you go, God is already there. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you all now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen.